One of the methods of creating orreries that some of the Meccano orrery builders have been using is called the nested turntables method. In this article, <coughs> Michael Whiting, orrery developments used in Meccano in um, constructing planetaria, he describes six methods, and the method that we're interested in today was used in the Jovian satellite orrery. Uh, it's referred to as method two in his article. Nested turntables approach uses a number of turntables, similar to the Lego turntable here, stacked one on top of each other. And then they're made to rotate through a number of shafts which are located inside the turntables. Co uh, coax uh, parallel um, uh, shafts, uh, sort of coaxial, they're slightly off-center. And the idea is that you rotate, in this case it's a white shaft, uh, from the bottom. You apply the, the drive power from the bottom. And then that white shaft travels some distance up. And when it reaches the uh, um, place where you want it, uh, the drive, it's got a couple more gears in the top here. Now here I have a pair of white shafts. It turns out to work much better this way. If you only have one, then uh, there's enough torque and enough friction and uh, enough imprecision and alignment that uh, essentially the shaft will simply push itself and sort of towards the side and it, um, it ends up uh, being bound up and it seizes up. If we use a pair of shafts, however, uh, the torque is balanced on either side um, and uh, it's essentially all directed um, uh, t in t the, the, the center of a torque axis is in, the, is in the center axis of the turntable rather than being off center and it doesn't bind up, uh, at least not nearly as much. So to make it go we need two parallel shafts located at opposite sides uh, and this Lego wheel here, uh, the, the little tire hub that has seven holes in it, normally used as a tire hub, uh, allows us to have six shafts, um, that is three pairs, and there's a seventh shaft in the middle. Now I've only populated this with a total of five shafts. I have four rotators and I have uh, one center support shaft and I've left two holes open. Um, but the idea would be that you would have three pairs of shafts. So these other black shafts here represent that. Uh, at any rate, to, uh, to drive it, you need to um, have a setup kind of like this. You have a bunch of idler gears. I have a 40 here that I'm touching right now. And then there are uh, four 16 tooth gears. Now to get these gears to go, you uh, well, first of all to mount them, you put them on uh, something like this blue plate that I have here. Let's get the light going. See that better? There we go. And the plate can be anchored in whatever way you, you choose. I've um, anchored it in a sort of uh, kludgy way here. There, I'm sure there are plenty of better ways to do that. And some of the um, gears will have to be mounted on these off-center Technic beams, the ones that have the holes located one half a stud off-center. Those are very useful when you need them, you really need them. Uh, the uh, 40 tooth gear is mounted that way. The 16 tooth gears, the four idler gears up here, are mounted the normal way. Here are some of the gears that are available uh, from LEGO. You've got the 8, the 12, 16 here, and this is a 24. If you want to drive this from the 8, you'd put it here like this. The uh, 16 goes here. If you want to use the 12, that would go here, like this. And of course the 24 goes one stud farther away than where the 8 was. Now this needs to be positioned so that the essentially so that you're not pushing uh, the t two small gears away. Uh, you're neither pushing them away or pulling them towards you, um, but there's a balance, so you're pushing one away and pulling the other towards you in, in an equal amount. If you, uh, 
if, if, you, if I were to pull this entire blue construction towards me, then because of the way the, the gears are bound up right now, it would be pulling on both gears at the same time from the outside edges, and that would, uh, again, that would be off-center torque, which would make it, make it bind up. So you have to be a little careful when you put this together. Uh, at any rate, this, this method allows us to put uh, a number of gears out here, and, and sort of in this general area of the model. And those gears can be used to set up whatever gear ratio you need. Now we're supposed to imagine that these red beams here are not connected and that the turntable is free to rotate in any direction, it's kind of rotating space. In an actual model there would be a number of turntables stacked one above each other. There would have to be at least four. You need one as a base uh, on which the first driven turntable can rotate. Then you need uh, uh, three that are being driven, so that's a total of four turntables in a tower. At any rate, if I were to take these red beams off, and I can a little hard to do with one hand. <laughs> you will get it eventually. Oh, yes, I need to take that one out first. There we go, I got it. Now the thing's free. So this, uh, this, this is the part here that would be driven from the next level up. This is the part here, the part I'm moving now, that would be driven by the drive tra cha chain uh, that, I'm, that I'm showing you right now. These gears in the bottom are making this part here move. See, like that. And so there has to be another turntable below that, located kind of around here somewhere which would be fixed to the ground. Uh, actually, it would be fixed to a gantry of some type, and these, like these straddling beams, the red beams that I had here, uh, so that it, it can bridge over the, all the gear machinery. But at any rate, uh, that allows you to have three uh, levels uh, of planets that can rotate at, at very strange ratios, whatever orbital periods are needed. And uh, then you can use methods similar to the um, <clears throat> the other orreries, uh, uh, such as this one, the five planet orrery, subject of a different video, use those types of methods to extract um, relative velocities off of neighboring turntables and uh, get some more arms on the top and to rotate, uh, to rotate the moons. The neighboring turntables to rotate the moons is uh, the way that I got my fifth planet here, this one to have its moons orbiting. I essentially derived the speed of the moons off the relative rotational velocity of the turntable that supports the fifth arm and the turntable that supports the fourth arm.